Well, that was a strange noise to suddenly pierce the silence as I was getting set up. Well, I guess the video has started without me. Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, the map I'm going to be checking out is one that goes by the workshop title, Places You've Seen in Your Dreams. Now, from the look of the screenshots, it seems like the goal of this map is to recreate a number of popular liminal space images. Of course, by now, I've explored plenty of maps that had this exact same premise, including the very start of this series, my explore of Liminal Hotel. But what drew me to this map in particular is just the title alone, Places You've Seen in Your Dreams. It made something click with me and kind of start to approach it from an angle that I don't think I've really examined before. What is a big part of what makes liminal space images so disconcerting? I think that part of it is because it reminds you of something not necessarily that you yourself have seen in your dreams, but that you know your dream brain might construct. So what are some elements of a dream space? I feel like a part of it is it emulates somewhere that you might have seen or at least fulfills the purpose of a space you might interact with in your daily life. So, for example, this space looks like some kind of mall food court. It just kind of takes elements, it borrows elements from things that you recognize as familiar, and kind of places them about in an incoherent way. Now, as to how this ties into why we find these spaces so unsettling, I think it's because we all kind of have a knowledge of what a dream-constructed space might look like, but it's normally the kind of thing that you would only see in a dream and start to forget about it as soon as you wake up. So when you see an image on the internet in your waking life of something that has that kind of design logic to it, it's almost like you, you're treating yourself to a vague nostalgia for something that you feel like you've seen but may or may not have. I'm starting to spend way too long monologuing in the starting area, though. We have a map to explore. Starting with the Just for Kids section, which is quite notably darker than the rest of the area. Oh, that's another part of the food court aesthetic. See that, like, pink and green? It's almost got that neon lighting, even though it really doesn't have any reason to, because it doesn't have the signs and glow strips that would be along the ceiling to make that effect happen. Ah. Oh, I see. These aren't escalators. This is like some kind of kid's, like, play area. Only after hours. I used to have dreams like this as a kid. hearing some really weird noises. All right, sorry for getting distracted. I used to have dreams about these huge, like wondrous playgrounds and indoor play areas with bright colors and padded floors everywhere so you could do whatever you wanted and you'd never get hurt, slides and tunnels crisscrossing every which way. And they would inevitably end up with there being no other kids around and half the lights going out and me being stuck locked inside after dark. Now, as much as I wouldn't like to, I've got to see... Oh, what's at the back here? They can't change back. Don't take them with you. Save yourself. Claude Huggins, you are a coward and you let your children die. Is there actually going to be a story on this map, or is this like some kind of easter egg or a reference that I'm not getting? In any case, it's really disturbing how that was there the whole time, and I had to really dig deep into the shadows to find it. Let's just start trying doors, I suppose.
Something I've always found really fascinating about dream logic is how the premise will slowly change over time. I actually did an essay on this last summer titled uh, Dream Logic and Its Place in Horror, where I kind of started to get into... Well, it's like an old arcade. I kind of went into how dreams kind of change one element at a time and how there will always be kind of one common element between them. But it kind of gets telephoned into something else altogether. It's, you only actually notice the transition once you look back and try to contextualize it all into a chain of events. Yeah, anybody remember these things? I certainly do. Now, something that I've really noted when it comes to liminal space imagery is they've got these, like, brightly colored plastic toy looks in a lot of them. A lot of them are, like, children's, like, McDonald's play areas and feature toys strewn about like this. And, you know, I kind of think that a big part of that is the audience that it's targeting, because who's mostly talking about this stuff? It's 20-somethings on the internet, people who would have grown up with this stuff. So I think I'm really on to something. We even have that with the slides over here. So I think I'm really on to something when I say that a big part of it is nostalgia for things that you may or may not have seen. It's almost like you're looking into dreams that you had as a kid. But I must say, the way the mood so abruptly changes between spaces... Uh, walking through this feels like I'm living out the plot. That was my attempt at doing air quotes in VR. It didn't really work out so well. The, hang on, I'm going to get this. The plot of Inland Empire. I was not expecting to be greeted by a wall of darkness. More children's play areas only completely dark. It's... Okay, this map is doing actual scares. Reminder to change gears. I think... I think I should just start moving between areas more quickly and allow myself to experience it. I don't like how quiet it's gotten. I'm ignoring so many different possibilities, but this map really is just a maze. Whenever you hear songs and dreams, at least to me, it's almost always like that. Something that you don't even really consciously register. I mean, it's always more of a noise. Something that you're vaguely aware of, and that may even have a tune to it, but you don't really think about it in the moment. Ugh. Don't want to go that way. Okay, I'm going to save this for later. One thing that's kind of difficult about this map is the non-linearity of it, which I've mentioned before makes it really, really difficult to commentate on it. Oh, the reflection in that glass scared me. Just the movement got to me. It's just that each area is presenting me with a bunch of different branching paths that I can take, and it makes it really hard to organize all this into a loop in my head. I try to keep linear progression, even on a non-linear map, but it, it's really difficult to do here. I really thought there'd be more back here. Huh, it's like some kind of pizza restaurant.
It's like distorted sounds playing over the speakers. And they started when I arrived here. Now, something that I've observed from my own dreams is that often they place you into this world that feels like it has its own rules, and you'll feel like they're rules that you've always known. So when I came around this corner and those sounds started coming out of the speakers, I started thinking that that indicates that maybe I'm supposed to do something, but I couldn't remember what it was. I don't like how the ambient sounds change when I stepped into this water. For example, I used to often have dreams of having to go back to school, but I can never remember, like, which class I'm supposed to be in, and no matter how many people I ask, and no matter how many papers I get, I can just never figure out where I'm supposed to be. It's like I just came in with amnesia one day, but it never strikes me as odd that I apparently have been doing it up until this point. Or like whenever I have to run. I'll, like, it'll be like my legs are lead bricks, but I'll just think that it's always been like this. Hmm. Oh, it is... Wait. Huh, it's like a weird hybrid, like, interior-exterior out there. Huh. You know, see, that's like a bunker. Hang on, I'll come back to that later. I, I keep saying that, but who knows when I'll get back to this stuff. This place is quickly revealing itself to be gigantic. Ugh. This is like some kind of funhouse room. Uh, I hate covered furniture. Not only because they look like your classic bedsheet ghosts, but... Also because there tends to be a lot of them in a single space, and you never know which one's gonna get up and start moving the second you turn your back. And if there's enough of them all together, you'll never remember which one moved. The space is huge and empty, I find that dream spaces tend to be very exaggerated in size, like you tend to perceive them as being way bigger than any such place would ever actually be, way bigger than it could ever have any purpose for. And that space will always either be uncharacteristically empty, or totally packed and maze-like. Uh, this leads back out onto this area. Which means, I'm going to take a wild guess here. Does this go to the pizza restaurant? No, there's still more. Okay, I'm going to dedicate some time to coming back this way. So that I can kind of loop back in on where I was before. Yes. This is what I was saying about areas being uncharacteristically cramped. Because when you're running from something you'll often have to push through all these objects. I feel like in dreams, frustration is a very big component. You'll never quite be able to see what you're trying to see. You'll never quite get to do what you want, and if something's pursuing you, you'll never quite be able to get away. You'll be able to go just fast enough that it's always right on your heels. I've had dreams that I was, like, getting into some holy grail abandoned location, but I forgot my camera at home. Yep, we're back at the pizza place. Pizza place. Any observation that I make, I really want you to let me know in the comments if you relate to this, because obviously I can only speak from my own experience with dreams. It's these pitch black... I don't know why my right hand does this sometimes. It's these pitch black starless nights. Before I move on from this area, I think I'm gonna head back a little bit, and after we check this room, go up that staircase. 
Yes. And, oh, oh, oh my god. Why does this always happen to me? Why do I always get so scared of my own reflection? But, oh man, that... I need a minute to recover from that. The way... The way that one in particular played out. Also, why is Bizarro me holding my flashlight like that? Get it right. The way that played out was... The smoothness, and the way I kind of peeked around the corner. <sighs> Alright, might as well commentate on this room a little bit while I'm here. Daylight. Daylight indoors in dreams is very often just hazy light coming through windows. I can rarely see outside. It always just in It's always just light to indicate that it is day, or darkness to indicate that it is dark. I don't like the way that your flashlight crosses the mirror threshold and into my room. There is something more going on here. I'm leaving. Sorry guys, I had a bit of a slow start with the commentary, but it seems like I've been spooked into action now. I was having difficulty finding things to say, but that room cleared that right up. Yeah, this room has kind of a grandma's house vibe, doesn't it? And this is like a big closet. What happens if I close myself inside? Nothing, but I, I really don't like doing this. At all. Ugh. Not what I expected. See, I'm trying to look at this from the perspective of... how a dream might flow. And just like that, we're in a parking garage. Alright, hug the sides, as with any big dark space. But we find that it's actually not as big as we thought initially. However, I'm hearing some weird sounds around me. This is a dead end? Okay, I'm good with that. I am good with that. Let's go. I don't like it when my flashlight doesn't reach all the way to the end of a space. Now we're moving more... Oh, I just hit something. We're moving more in this direction now, so maybe... It'll kind of loop back in on the area that that outdoor area next to the play area was going to. It's like some kind of, like, empty log cabin. What happens if I walk into this? Oh. 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 What just happened to me? Oh, it's a it's a teleport. All right, let's just start opening doors and see what happens before we start taking the open space. Uh, this appears to be the ventilation and heating display room. Huh. Outdoor features being located in a room always get to me. I don't really have much to say about it, though. I can't say that this is something that I often see in my dreams. However, cramped, dark spaces, that's another story. That's something I'm quite familiar with. <laughs> oh, it's a chair. I thought it was like somebody peeking out from behind the pillar. See, I don't like this. It's an open space in the middle with pillars to the side. And it has the feeling of being like a landing strip, like... It's been waiting for me, like I'm supposed to come here and see something. But all that's there is those ch uh, chairs placed in the corner. That looks breakable, is it? Yep! And where does that lead? 
back here to the beginning. Let's remember this is here because it might be useful if we need to regain our bearings. Something about dreams is that they can take all kinds of crazy turns, but at least for me, they always seem to end up back at kind of the same place. Even if the original idea gets telephoned into something completely different, it always tends to reach back to the initial point. Useless windows. I have to check every side. There's those exaggerated size structures I'm so fond of. And just completely nonsensical ones. To me, a lot of these spaces feel like something that, like, child me would come up with if I were asked to design a house. Hmm. This is more like a true outdoors. At least we've got an actual texture on the sky for a change. Makes this place feel a little bit more inviting. Now as for a door in the middle of the hedges, that's a little bit more ominous. Can we climb that water tower? Or I assume it's a water tower. See, it's one of those things where it evokes images of something familiar, but when you really look at it, it doesn't really quite look the same. In any case, it doesn't look interactable. One trend I've noted in liminal space imagery is there will often be like a big mural or some large wall with one small port like a door or window acting as a blemish. That of course is something that like wouldn't normally be there, but also I feel like there's like an element of temptation to it. Like you're trapped here and there's nowhere to go but for the one place that seems so threatening that you honestly debate whether you should just stay here. I think part of it is also kind of that hole in the veneer. So here you have this room that's all decorated and colorful, but it's got that dim lighting. It's got that disconcertingly high ceiling. And it's got that one door on the side. And this makes more sense now that it's opened that thing that you that looks so bright and colorful, but that you could kind of already feel something wrong with it, now that veneer is pierced with something more utilitarian. A dark concrete hallway with... with, like, workbenches and tables strewn about. Carpet in a school gym. That's going to result in some nasty rug burn. Yes. Oh, I got scared by Mr. Peanut or whatever their name, whatever name they're using for the Left 4 Dead 2 asset. You know, come to think of it, this almost looks like it's taking what I said before about having the elements of a familiar type of space while not actually completely emulating it and doing it in the form of, like, a texture change. So here, this has the carnival look by having, you know, the painted walls and the barriers and the mascots, but a bumper car sitting on grass? Now, I was going to talk about how this looks kind of like it could be either, like, a daycare, or some kind of, like, pet store display. But, I, I actually, I have no liminal commentary on this. This looks awesome. This looks like something I would have really, really enjoyed as a kid.
I might be a guinea pig or some sort of rabbit. It's a trap. They'll let you... Hang on, wait. They'll let you on, but they won't let you leave. I don't think I didn't hear that. I'm kind of starting to wonder if there really is, like, some kind of story to this map. This is the second note we found. The first one was next to the corpse in the play area at the beginning. Huh. There's actually a whole 3D space back here. Do I want to? Real question, is it my job to? Unfortunately, yes. Hang on, that sound is mixed really weirdly. I can't tell if that's the game or if that's something I'm hearing in real life. I'm back here. Ugh. It's looped back in on this area. Like I fell out of the void. Well, since we're back here, I suppose we might as well try that door we didn't get a chance to before. There's our portal of doom. Can I move you? Uh, it's very, very difficult. Often in VR, you have to reach directly to the center of a prop to be able to pick it up. It's like I can hear like a faint screaming. Please move out of my way, chair. I can't, I can't even jump. I'm stuck. There we go. I just needed a running jump. This, to me, is such a creepy thought. A pool in the dark. I honestly don't know why. I know it's my job to commentate on this stuff, but I can't describe why a body of water just sitting unobserved in a pitch black room is so creepy to me. It kind of reminds me of when I was a preschooler and... I would freak myself out imagining all the different ghosts and monsters that I believe must be patrolling the halls of my old school at night. There's a really old and creepy building. Ah, yes! We've made a full loop back! This is... the path from the play area. Kind of looks more like it's combining the ideas of, like, a mall and an airport terminal. See, I feel like a place like this would almost be less unsettling if the lights were off. If it actually looked like it was abandoned, but it's not. It's in that intermediate space where it's like it's open but not at the same time. If that other room is anything to go by, that white void is a portal. So let's try the other door, which bears a rather ominous exit sign before we do anything else. Okay, that sound is quite expertly placed, where I can hear it coming out of the vent. I think it would be even scarier if that were an actual 3D vent. Imagine hearing that sound, which seems to have stopped, so even bigger props if it's a one-time thing, and trying to peer through the grates in the darkness to try and figure out what made it. It might confuse players, though, make them think that it's something they can break down. Nope. Doesn't open. Getting real Red Room vibes. Any minute now, a little man's gonna come 
dancing out at the curtains. Uh, there's those speakers that always have something to say. It's like music being played backwards or something. Those sounds of, like, tortured screaming over radio static have not stopped playing the entire time. I thought at first that that was something specific to the pool room, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I think I'm going to save this for last. See if we missed anything down this way. Yep, empty store. That's unexpected architecture. It's around here. Oh, it it keeps going. I thought I was nearing the end, but that's never ever the case. Well, at least I can see the bottom, right? So weird. Uh, I hate this. Okay, I'm now realizing a new fear, and that's having to duck in cramped waterways. Ah, uh, why is that such a claustrophobic feeling? Specifically, having to crouch down here. Ah, uh, I've found Waterworld. I don't like this at all. So for some reason, something that I've noticed is that everything that I said about liminal spaces up until this point kind of goes in a different direction when it comes to these water features. So often water will either be very deep or about waist high. It'll often have impossibly high ceilings or very low ceilings, and in the middle, it's just kind of populated by shapes, while other spaces will have images that evoke feelings of places you might recognize from your real life. These water spaces don't usually seem to have that. The commonality is that they're always absolutely coated in tile, which of course, you know, makes sense from the perspective of like, you know, showers or pools, but, you know, where have you ever seen anything that looks even remotely like this? And it's like all classic liminal space imagery that relates to water is like this. I really want to think more about, like, why that is. Why irregular waterways are seemingly such a common image, but one that doesn't really fit into the ideas that I've discussed so far. Alright, portal me up. What is this? Am I, am I maybe in the water tower from before? <sighs> oh. I, I think that that, 
Wait, I think that that piece of tile on the ground acted as a, as a portal that put me back here. When I entered this space, I started in an area that seemed like it was lit by daylight, a nice little pool, and then I stepped into the locker room, and it began to get really dark, and creepy, and foreboding, and finally, I found this drop, this ladder that just goes very, very deep, and when I got there, I was in a space that was dark and had all of these dozens of blind corners and had to navigate by flashlight, pursued all the way by these disturbing noises. And then I got here, had a little bit of a reprieve, and stepped into the light. And that music started playing, that like heavenly sound as I ascended an area that looked a lot like the area that I came down, only, let's get back in there. Only, it's not dark. It's got warm colored tiles and there's leaves and vegetation growing on it. And instead of coming down into the darkness, I'm ascending towards the light to a dome. I've gone from being perceived as well, ah, <laughs> Never mind. I've gone from the perception that I'm well underground to the perception that I'm rising up into the sky. Like in a dream, something as simple as walking across the room and opening a cabinet and getting a box of crackers can have all the emotional weight of, like, good triumphing over evil or the world being consumed by darkness, and there's no way you could possibly explain that. It's just how you feel in the moment. In that way, choosing to follow this path kind of has, like, its own narrative arc without ever having any characters or even plot. In my Dream Logic video, I talked about how... I talked about how dreams kind of change themselves based on which emotions you decide to linger on, which aspects you decide to focus your attention on. And I feel like you could get a very similar experience out of this map. Oh. I guess we won't save this for last. This is where the Red Room came out. Now this is reminding me more of The Shining. Oh, wait. Wait, we've been here before. Yes, this is where these stairs came down. Uh, I don't quite remember if there was anything we missed in this direction, but don't worry, I'm going to check that later. Of course, I'll be doing a no-clip run of the map after I'm finished to see if there's anything that I missed. But I think we're nearing the end of this thing. Enjoying the show, everyone? Yeah, this is something that also comes up very often in liminal space images, and it's something that personally freaks me out on a very deep level. Just rows of empty chairs that are propped up as if they're looking at something, but there's nothing to look at. I never opened up this door over here. Hmm. It's kind of strange how I've spent so long exploring this dream that when we come back around to the beginning, I'm almost nostalgic for these areas. I'm not sure for how long I've been recording, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere between one and two hours. And, you know, that's something that I've ex actually experienced in dreams in real life. I talked before about how it'll often find a way to wrap back around to that original space by the end of it, or at least to wrap back around to its original idea that tied the whole thing together. And when you get there, you're often nostalgic for it, even though it's something that didn't even, <laughs> that wasn't even a thought to you before you fell asleep. 
Uh, dreams can play with your perception of time like that. Closet. Closet within a closet. Seems there's a whole branch that's remained unexplored up until this point. See, this looks like some kind of closed down, like, clothes or jewelry store. But then there's just, like, some otherworldly mouth that's opened up in the middle of it, almost like... Almost like it becomes a completely different place at night. And these... These are the slides from the play area. Leading down into the void. Well, YOLO! Into a grocery store. I feel like a lot of the liminal aesthetic doesn't just emulate dreams, but specifically emulates childhood dreams. What's a childhood element? Big slides. What's a childhood fear? A slide that goes to nowhere. What's a familiar childhood space that you don't want to be in? Being lugged around an empty grocery store at night. I don't know if you guys can relate to that. That's a dream I had a lot as a kid, is being locked in a store overnight. looks deep. That's a big space and it looks really, really deep. I feel like I have to take a look, though. It was so hard to submerge myself, but it is indeed quite deep and quite spooky down here. I want to go now. It's like liminal spaces are things that you'd think are awesome as a kid, but you realize as an adult would be terrifying in practice. I wonder why that change occurs. It's almost like kids almost don't have that uncanny valley feel. But of course I know that's not true. I mean, I know kids get really freaked out by things like animatronics and puppets. So it's not like they don't feel that eeriness from things that don't look quite right. I think it just has to do with like having less of a conception of like established norms. Like they might be aware of them, but not really be fully understanding of why they exist. Yeah, this has kind of turned into a child psychology video more than a liminal space analysis video. But the more I talk about it, the more I become convinced that the two things are actually very linked. Where do you go? Wait. Uh. Highway bridge at night.
And it leads us back here. Okay, that's actually not the worst thing because... All we have to do to get back is retrace our steps. Last thing. What's up the strange diagonal staircase? I feel like when diagonals show up in liminal spaces, whether it be a staircase or a hallway, I think it's because it kind of leads your mind. It builds your anticipation of what's going to be around that corner. It's not just the fact that it's not a type of structure you'd typically see in your day-to-day -day life. Huh. Well, I must say, out of everywhere else on the map, this wouldn't be the worst place to set up shop. I mean, you throw a TV and an Xbox with some controllers in that corner and... you got a pretty good spot to hang out with some friends. And really, that's my favorite kind of liminal space, the one that feels like a reprieve from the creepiness of everywhere else. I feel like finally settling down here would be the point where I'd like to wake up. Hang on a second, I'm interrupting this outro because I just realized... I missed some things. I was in the process of editing and I realized I'm actually missing a fair bit. First of all, I never went down this way. Ah, oh, this is like the kids' dining area. First actually logically consistent thing I've seen on this map. It's They have a similar thing at my local movie theater, where they have like a kids' party area, but the fact that it's just this like tiny thing with like painted walls, actually I think it does have the stars like this, and it's just this little area tucked away. Uh, it's really disturbing whenever I actually manage to catch a glimpse of the door into there. Now this caught my eye early on, out of my way, just chuck you over there with my superhuman VR strength. I don't care for your house. Ah, that does open. Now this, this little room under the stairs, this to me reminds me of the Bernard's Door phenomenon. I've talked about it a few times before on the channel, but basically it's the idea that a very common dream among people is the idea of returning to some kind of childhood home or familiar place and discovering a door that in real life doesn't exist, often in some hidden away location, but you get the impression that you've always known about it, and you feel a sense of evil or foreboding from it. What is that noise? <laughs> what is going on here? What is that about? Okay, I think there's some really weird things going on with level of detail. Better safe than sorry. Written over and over again in two mattresses. And a TV. Imagine finding this. Imagine finding not only a secret room in a familiar home, especially a childhood home, and not only that, but evidence that someone has been living there for seemingly quite a long time. Imagine thinking about the implications of that. All the things they would have heard, all the things they'd know about you, and how little you know about them, because by the time you find it, all that's left is the remains. That would drive you crazy. Now back here at the stairs that go up to darkened Grandma's house, I actually neglected to return to what looked like some kind of bunker. Perhaps I shouldn't use the flashlight so much, perhaps I should let the the intended lighting speak for itself at points. More strange sounds coming from in there. Can I open this up somehow? Any of this? Ah, there we go.
Ramps and stairs. Ramps and stairs going in irregular directions. Very, very common in liminal space imagery. Actually, something I've noted about liminal space imagery is that a lot of the times it kind of looks like 1990s business center. Stop that. Oh, a cornfield. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oh, there's at least there's a clear path through. I could actually almost see this as working in reverse. I can see being in a dream and running through a cornfield in the dark, afraid of something chasing me, and finally heading towards the light and ending up in some kind of warm, safe office building. I feel like warm, safe office building is a combination of words that's never been used in that way before. Okay, what is this light trying to tell me? I don't feel at all good about this clearing. I'm out. I'm getting Outlast 2 flashbacks from here. Oh. This is like that other room in that other place, except... The balcony is like... I don't even think it's inverted. I think it's the same way. It's just that the wallpaper is different. It's planes instead of that barn. That is actually an element in dreams, is uh, how often you'll return to the same place in different nights, but there will just be something different about them. Some major aesthetic detail while still, still keeping it mechanically the same. Oh, that does open. What is this? Like some kind of solitary confinement? Oh. The repetition of opening these doors is not making me confident. Okay. I think we're in the clear at this point. I always like to say that I think I'm in the clear immediately prior to doing the last thing in a chain of events because, well, it's pretty funny when I get to eat my words, isn't it? Oh, I see where this goes. This leads us back down to where that collapsed ceiling was. Yeah, we, we've been here before. How much more do I have to crouch down? Yep. This is familiar territory. Well, not familiar, but I've been here before. Ah. This actually breaks open. Because of the texture it used, I didn't think to try it earlier. Usually when things are breakable, it'll be more like a prop, but... <sighs> What's through here? I was really curious about this, but... I assumed it couldn't be accessed. Shadow looks like something peeking around the corner. Oh, it's pipes. But I could have sworn I just heard a weird noise coming out of here. This is far more dirty and grimy than anything we've encountered so far. The sound is completely cut out. Don't like it when that happens. Oh no, it's like the bathroom from Saw. I don't like how absolutely silent it is. I think here would be a good place to end it for real. You may now resume your regularly scheduled outro.
I'm sorry if my commentary wasn't very articulate or insightful this time around. This is a really interesting map. I mean, besides being huge, it's also playing with a lot of ideas that I don't know if I've even discussed at all yet. I feel like one of the big takeaways is places that would seem fun as a kid, but cast into darkness, almost as if someone built like a child's dream come true and then shut the lights off on it and locked them in. That seems to be a recurring theme with a lot of these areas. Places that would be a lot of fun if they weren't so dang dark. In a lot of ways, they feel like something that started as a dream and have begun to make that mental transition into the nightmare stage. Also, I find it extremely creepy that since the pool room in the dark, those distorted, anguished sounds have never stopped following me around. Nevertheless, I hope my struggle to commentate didn't take away from the eerie yet somehow vaguely nostalgic vibes a lot of these rooms put out, and you were still able to enjoy the ride. This map is a very weird ride, but one I'm glad I experienced. If you did like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you want to try this map out for yourself, I will place the link down there in the description. If you'd like to suggest other maps, or any creepy videos you'd like me to make in general, the best place to do that is at the Discord, which I will link in the description. There we have an awesome community who loves to discuss all things creepy and comfy, so I highly recommend checking it out. And as always, I will see you in the next one.